Whooping cough cases are at their highest level in more than a decade for this time of year. The CDC reporting more than 18,000 cases. Joining me now is Dr. Amesh Adalja with Johns Hopkins Center for Health Security. Doctor, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Could you put this increase in cases in a perspective for us? Because it isn't necessarily an unexpected, correct? Correct. This was not unexpected. Pertussis goes through these three to five year cycles and we were sort of due for one. And that's compounded by the fact that we just came through the COVID-19 pandemic where people were social distancing, where they were wearing masks. And that sort of interrupted transmission of many different respiratory infections, including whooping cough or pertussis. And now it's sort of catching back up. So yes, this is not something that we are panicking about, but it is something that we are concerned about because it is something that we want to try and control a little better than we are. Doctor, for those who may not know, because we have a lot of different uh, uh, situations we're dealing with right now, especially this time of year, what are the symptoms of whooping cough pertussis and how do you protect yourself from infection? So whooping cough starts out with just a flu-like illness. So people might have a runny nose, a mild cough, just feeling kind of achy, not well. But what's characteristic about it is that that cough can be quite severe and people will go through these coughing fits. And at the end, they make this big sound because they're trying to catch their breath and that's the sound of the whoop. And sometimes they even vomit after that coughing spell. And it, the coughing can be so severe, especially in adults, that they sometimes break a rib. And, and that's the main symptom that distinguishes it from all the other the respiratory viruses. It's that, that whoop and the, the violent coughing, which can last sometimes up to 100 days. And how can you prevent this? Whooping cough is a vaccine preventable disease. We give children a series of five vaccination shots when they're uh, for starting at two months. And we also give adults uh, an update on their uh, whooping cough or pertussis when they get their tetanus booster. So that's how you protect it is by getting people vaccinated. But the vaccine isn't you know, 100 percent. It's not the best vaccine. Uh, so we still see cases even when people are vaccinated. Doctor, let's dig a little bit deeper into that, because according to CDC data, vaccine exemptions are at an all time high. Could you explain why we're seeing more cases? Well, pertussis is likely the result of multiple different things. One is the natural cycles that it goes through, three to five years. We also had this pandemic break. The vaccine is not the best vaccine, even when you get 100% vaccination rates. We, we made a formulation change in the vaccine uh, about uh, over a decade ago, and that's not as effective as the prior, prior vaccine, but causes less side effects, so they made that change. And then the last thing is that, yes, vaccination rates have slipped a bit. Uh, so all of these things together are causing kind of a perfect storm for the level of, of pertussis that we've seen so far this year in 2024. But it's important to remember that in 2012, for example, we had over 40,000 cases reported. So this isn't uh, this isn't the worst year that we've seen in the modern era with pertussis, despite a lot of headlines about pertussis. Right. There are absolutely measures you can take to uh, bring that number down. All right. Dr. Amish Adalja with Johns Hopkins, thank you so much for your time.